Nature supervised the German press of 2,300 daily newspapers. In pursuance of this function, he held daily press conferences to deliver the directives of the propaganda ministry to these papers. He was, however, subordinate to Dietrich, the Reich press chief, who was in turn a subordinate of Goebbels. It was Dietrich who received the directives to the press of Goebbels and other Reich ministers and prepared them as instructions, which he then handed to Fritscher for the press. He then finds that Fritscher is not guilty under this indictment and directs that he shall be discharged by the marshal when the tribunal presently adjourns. Schott and Goering promptly became embroiled in a series of disputes. Although there was an element of personal controversy running through these disputes, Schott disagreed with Goering on certain basic policy issues. Schott on financial grounds advocated a retrenchment in the rearmament program, opposed as uneconomical much of the proposed expansion of production facilities, particularly for synthetics, urged a drastic tightening on government credit and a cautious policy in dealing with Germany's foreign exchange reserves. As a result of this dispute, and of a bitter argument in which Hitler accused Schott of upsetting his plans by his financial methods, Schott went on leave of absence from the Minister of Economics on September 5th, 1937, and resigned as Minister of Economics and as Plenipotentiary General for War Economy on November 16, 1937. As president of the Reichsbank, Schott was still involved in disputes throughout... ...at the time. After the occupation of the Sudetenland, he arranged for currency conversion and for the incorporation into the Reichsbank of local Czech banks of issue. On November 29th, 1938, he made a speech in which he pointed with pride to his economic policy which had created a high degree of German, German armament and added that this armament had made Germany's foreign policy possible. Evidence has been given for the prosecution and a considerable volume of evidence for the defense. The tribunal has considered the whole of this evidence with great care and comes to the conclusion that this necessary inference has not been established beyond a reasonable doubt. Conclusion. The tribunal finds that Schott is not guilty on this indictment and directs that he shall be discharged by the marshal when the tribunal presently adjourns. The evidence leaves no doubt that von Papen's primary purpose as minister to Austria was to undermine the Schusnig regime strengthen the Austrian Nazis for the purpose of bringing about answers. To carry this through this plan, he engaged in both intrigue and bullying. But the Charter does not make criminals. Von Papen can be held guilty only if he was a party to the planning of aggressive war. There is no evidence that he was a party to the plans under which the occupation of Austria was a step in the direction of further aggressive action, or even that he participated in plans to occupy Austria by aggressive war if necessary. But it is not established beyond a reasonable doubt that this was the purpose of his activity, and therefore the tribunal cannot hold that he was a party to the common plan charged in count one, or participated in the planning of the aggressive wars charged under count two. Conclusion. The tribunal finds that von Papen is not guilty under this indictment and directs that he should be discharged by the marshal when the tribunal presently adjourns.